leather yellow leather. Oh, hi. Good to see you there. My name is Mr. Pippin. I've been reading Tripping Over the Lunch Late and recording these videos for my students. Today, we'll be reading The Desk, a story by Lee Wardlaw. Looks like we've got uh, a longer one on our hands, so this one may be chopped up into two parts. Let's get started, shall we? The first thing we noticed that morning was the smell. 1.3 seconds after my best friend Tabby and I hustled into our sixth grade class, she screeched in her tracks, wrinkled her nose, and demanded, Ew, Craig, what is that? I don't know. I plunked my book bag onto a chair and sniff sniffed. Huh, it wasn't a bad smell. Not like the dumpster at 3.30 on a blistering day when the cafeteria had served UFO stew for lunch. UFO, unidentified floating objects. Not like the juicy carcasses of my brother's socks after one of his high school triple overtime basketball games. No, it was a musky smell. An out-of-the-place smell. And I know I've smelled this before, but can't remember where smell. Reminds me of a petting zoo, Tab said. The Three Stooges. Water probably needs to be changed. I peered into the humid aquarium where Larry, Moe, and Curly, our white Australian tree frogs, listened in their tropical home away from home. They ogled me as if to say, Keep your big unwebbed hand out of our pond, you knucklehead. Don't worry, fellas, I soothed. Your water is just the way you like it, murky, not stagnant, with a twist of moss. Nyok, 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 Moe croaked. Craig! Tab's voice scaled an urgent octave. Look at the desk! I didn't need to ask which desk. There was only one we'd wondered about, whispered about, all last week. I whirled. The desk sat shoved, as always, in the last row, far left corner. But someone had crisscrossed it with a spider web of horner. But someone had crisscrossed it with a spider web of hornet yellow police tape that read crime scene do not cross we crept toward the desk without a word without a breath as if afraid it might explode the door behind us opened with a splintering crack tab and i levitated good morning craig tabby our teacher miss chapless greeted us as she bustled into the room books and papers teetered in her arms you two are here early finishing your greek project yes How's it going? Miss Chatless, look! Tab pointed at the desk. Our teacher glanced over, then shook her head and chuckled. I knew there was more to that young man than he let on. Seems he had the makings of a practical joker. I'm sorry he isn't with us anymore. My stomach bungee jumped to my toes and back. You mean, I gulped. Hmm. He's dead? That would explain the spell, the smell, Tabby murmured. She squatted to squint at the desk, examining it, inch by inch, as if expecting to find telltale evidence of murder, bloody fingerprints, a heavy crowbar, maybe a dangling body part. Dead? Of course not. Miss Chatless plucked a pink slip of paper from within her book cover. Just found this transfer form in my teacher's box. He's left the school. He must have expected it. He told us his first day. He wouldn't be here long, remember? One week ago, Monday morning, end of June, silent week, Tab. All you could hear was the whisper of turning pages and the clock above the blackboard said tick, tick, closer to lunch period. The door opened without warning. Twenty-four heads swiveled toward the interpret interruption. My head stayed put. I was only seven pages away from finishing the most exciting book I'd ever read, and did. Tab nudged me, her charm bracelet clinkling. I continued to read with my left eye while looking up with my right. That zinged me with a screwdriver in the middle of my forehead pain, so I saved my spot with a bookmark and focused on the door. A boy had entered, not tall, not short, but big. Ordinary, too, except for the lime green grasshopper tattooed on his left arm. The boy shuffled toward Miss Chatless, the tips of his ears as pink as the sheet of paper he handed her. People, listen up! Miss Chatless announced with excitement. We have a new student joining our class. A little late in the year, but better late than never. 
I'd like to introduce... She paused to recheck the paper. Ooh, this is a tongue twister. Help me out here. The boy's pinkish ears bloomed deep rose. I'll be gone before you learn to pronounce it, he said with an apologetic smile. Just call me A and W. Like the root beer, Tab asked. Just like. He waited, as if expecting us to ask something else. When no one did, the smile vanished, making me wonder if he'd really seen it. If I'd only imagined, he expected more. You may take Stacy's seat, Miss Chapman said. Her family's already left on their summer vacation. Last aisle, back row. Ears still pink, A&W shuffled kitty-corner from me to what would become the desk. The class resumed reading. A&W slid into his chair. I dove back into my more exciting than a roller coaster book. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something strange. A&W hunched forward in his note. He glanced right, left, right, like a spy on a secret mission. Assuring himself his actions were going uns unobserved. Satisfied, he tucked a flyer from his jeans pocket, scribbled something on the back of it, and folded it into a tight triangle. When he noticed me watching, he put a finger to his lips, winked, and slipped the paper inside the desk in a swift, furtive motion. He spent the rest of the period sitting straight, alert, guarding the desk like a soldier at his post. A&W is a weird nickname, I said to Tab at lunch while munching a tuna and green olive sandwich. Weird to you, maybe, she replied. I mean, people think Tab is a weird nickname for a girl until they learn the why. Tabby's last name is Stevens. Her parents were fans of the old TV program Bewitched and named their daughters Tabitha, Samantha, and Endora after three witches on the show. You're lucky, Tab reminded me for about the 477th time that year. Craig is a normal name. No one ever makes fun of it. No one ever asks you to wiggle your nose and do magic because of it. I wonder why he chose a w though, I said, watching him from across the playground. He sat by himself, unless you count a sack lunches company, by the tetherball court. Does he have a bubbly personality? Does he love root beer? Is he the sole heir to the a w fortune? Is there an a w fortune? We could ask him, Tabby pointed out. Yeah, I guess we could. But the bell rang, and we didn't. We were too busy doing end-of-the-year stuff, like building a model of the Acropolis out of popsicle sticks, studying for tests, going to soccer practice, learning songs for the school spring sing, and, in our spare time, eating lots and lots of popsicles. Tuesday, a and second day at school. He slid into his seat just as the echoes of the final morning bell faded. He had dark circles under his eyes like the ones Tappy gets after one of Marlene Socorro's slumber parties. Please take out your math books, Miss Chapman instructed, and do the problems on page 173 and 174. All of us banged, flung, or flipped open our desk and yanked out our books. Not A and W. Like the day before, he hurt he hunched forward, head low. Then he glanced elaborately, secretly. Right, left, right. Satisfied, he cracked the desk and, holding his breath, slipped the slow, cautious hand inside as if reaching into a basket of spitting cobras. I nudged Tabby. We watched together as A&W eased out of his math book. When he noticed us staring, he pressed a finger to his lips and winked. Then he closed the lid with a quick click and a deep sigh as if relieved the cobras hadn't escaped. noticing a flash of lying green on his right arm. Wasn't that grasshopper tattoo I marked on yesterday? He gave the apologetic smile. Was it? He answered and opened his math book to page 173. After math, the tattoo disappeared from A&W's right arm and reappeared beneath his right ear. After science, it bridged his nose. During silent reading time, A&W wore it pirate style over his right eye. What's with the roving tattoo, I wondered to Tabby at lunch while biting into a peanut butter slathered banana. She shook her head. It's like he's playing musical chairs with it or something. Look, where it is now. I gazed over at A&W's usual place by the tetherball court. I could have spotted that blazing green a mile away, especially since the tattoo was plastered smack dab in the middle of his forehead. I laughed. What's next? A tattoo on his teeth? 
It's obviously a rub-on tattoo, Tab said. He must have an endless supply of them. That's what he's guarding in the desk. Maybe his dad owns a company that makes rub-on tattoos, I suggested. And this is the publicity stunt. We could ask him, Tab pointed out. Yeah, I guess we could. But the bell rang, and we didn't. We were still too busy building our model of the Acropolis out of popsicle sticks, writing speeches for the last day of school promotion ceremony, losing soccer games, and in our spare time, eating lots of popsicles. I'm going to stop right there for part one. We'll pick it up in part two after the break.